Clément, in your papers, you, you, uh, you very in, uh, across the three, right? Uh, papers that uh, you co-wrote uh, and publish, uh, published by IFRI, uh, you pointed systematically at the necessity for Europe to take actions. Uh, what would you say are the priorities? First, I think the EU um, has taken the, the technology problem the wrong way. Because we, I say we because I'm European, we, we um, started with regulation in 1995. I think it's the first directive on uh, data protection. Uh, at a time when we were already lagging behind in industrial terms. So we, we started with regulation and now, today, we are beginning to think in industrial terms. So I think it was uh, the wrong way. Because you may ban Amazon or Microsoft from working with uh, governments, um, but if you don't have a European actor that can provide the same level of, of quality, uh, you lose. So actually, um, I think European sovereignty very much lies on its ability to foster an ecosystem of industrial actors um, in, in the, in the GovTech sector. And in that sense, um, I think the pandemic has been, uh, has raised awareness of this. Um, Thomas Gomar wrote an article about the end of digital innocence in, in Europe. Uh, and I think it, the word is very uh, well chosen. Um, and there are initiatives coming up. Uh, Gaia X, mm -hmm. uh, as far as the cloud computing is concerned. There are national initiatives, the blue uh, project with Orange, Capgemini, and, and so on. So it's very uh, encouraging. Um, and um, it is true as well for health governance, because um, there is no, currently, there is no common health policy in Europe. And if you look at the, the European history, it can be traced back to the 1950s. Uh, at that time, Paul Ribert, who was a French health minister, tried to promote uh, a common health policy. It was at the same time as the, um, uh, the common um, defense policy. Um, and it failed. So there is no common health policy. And I think COVID-19 shows that we have to move toward a common uh, a European health policy driven by data. Um, so I, I really hope it will be at the top of the agenda of the French presidency of, of uh, the EU uh, at the beginning of next year. Thank you. That's, that's a very interesting insight. And what we see also on uh, uh, what we witness on the market is because uh, there is a need uh, to converge around the use of data, um, there is a need to work in terms of ecosystem. Uh, and uh, we see actors, so the, the example of, you mentioned Blue, but uh, uh, there is another initiative around the Earth, which, which is called mm. uh, Future for Care. Uh, assembling uh, generally uh, Sanofi, Orange, and Capgemini, and all this to promote um, startups' uh, uh, evolution, um, creating the context of data usage. So the ability, the availability, the access, and interoperability around data will create the value. So maybe yeah, just one striking fact, uh, since we're discussing the, the fact is. Take into account that data is very important, is a fact. Uh, that sovereignty is essential, and like you said, there is some kind of digital innocence. However, it's a way to be quite defensive. Uh, what are we doing to, to make our history uh, ambitious and moving forward? And let's be concrete. Uh, how do we build companies that acquire very, very heter heterogeneous data that can be very meaningful from the health system. And we can make whatever uh, block around Europe. Google is inside. Mm -hmm. And let me give you some example. When you Google knows exactly if I'm a medical doctor, how? Because when I go to the hospital, I'm checked with my phone. And since I'm coming every day, they know that I'm a health worker. If I stay for long, for long time without going out for the hospital, they know I'm a, I'm a possibly a patient, and you know, uh, 
hospitals are built by departments, and if I check it on the Google Maps, they know if I have a diabetes or another disease. So this is there. This is for the health. Then when you go home and you say, OK, Google, OK, Google is a cool thing to say uh, what is the time and what is the weather and whatever. The fact is that you're living in incredibly powerful data, which is your vocal data, because in 10 years with the artificial intelligence stuff, you will be able to say that with a corrupt vocal data, maybe you have anxiety, maybe you have depression, maybe it's the beginning of Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease or uh, a stroke. And this is there. This is in Europe. And, and not talking about Android systems and all those kind of things. And I find this company is incredible, but how in Europe can we uh, make such a thing that we build global companies uh, 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 getting really diverse and massive data? This is very important. This is our sovereignty. And, and what I quoted, what I noticed in, when you take uh, blocks, uh, you take Russia, you take China, you take US, they have their search system, their own search system like Yandex or Google or whatever, and we don't have such. Mm -hmm. This is a matter of interest and we should be really, really uh, aware and, and maybe uh, threatened by, by, by this. So we need also industrial solutions. Yeah. Definitely. And I, I will just mention one uh, very positive one, which is, uh, you know, we all know that Amazon uh, has a, a dominant position uh, not only uh, very striking on the hosting with AWS, but also uh, in the e-commerce. And their platform is open uh, to uh, third-party retailers, uh, but of course it, it has downsides in terms of sharing all their data that can then be, uh, could be reused and seem to be reused by Amazon for their own purpose. So when we see um, solutions like Miracle, uh, which is you know, again, European-based, that offers an alternative uh, solution to retailers to the Amazon one, this is an industrial play. Uh, so we want more of that kind, right? Uh, and the fact that they reached uh, 3.5 billion uh, in their last round recently is uh, satisfying for the strategic value that the market sees into that. So